what's up cool kittens and kangaroos i'm kat and welcome back to the corner it's another sunday guys if you've been rocking with me for the past couple of weeks i thank you so 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 much and if you're a newbie here if you're new to the corner go ahead and subscribe hit the bell so you can get notifications we're going to have new videos even though we will be doing this every sunday at 8 o'clock p.m eastern standard time but still it doesn't hurt to get a notification um so yeah welcome back it's another sunday um so i decided to switch gears just a little bit we're still going to be in the realm of beauty but we're going to be switching not back but we're going to be um talking about natural hair care again and we're going to be talking about the top 10 my top 10 myths when it comes down to natural hair care um because i've been natural like i told you all since well i went back natural excuse me um in 2013 so this is seven going on eight well no 2020 yeah seven years for me since i went back natural and i have done everything i've been blonde i've been orange i've been red i've had a fade i've had a taper cut i've let it grow out um i've damaged my hair um any and everything you can think to do with natural hair or with hair period i have probably done it and so i just wanted to go ahead and debunk um my top 10 myths when it comes to natural hair care and natural hair in general so if you st stay tuned um and we're gonna go ahead and jump into it all right number 10 you must be going through something or some type of a life crisis to be going back natural or growing your natural hair. Um, I had heard this so many times when I went back natural in 2013. Um, there were people would come up to me like, you know, are you okay? What's going on? You know, I'm here for you. All because I decided that I was not going to put lie in my head anymore. If you all don't know what lie is, it's the main ingredient in relaxers. And it literally can burn a soda can. And when I watched Chris Rock's natural hair and saw what it did to a, I'm sorry, good hair, the, the documentary good hair, I saw what lie did to a soda can. And then I thought about putting that on my scalp. I just honestly and truly couldn't do it anymore. But people assume that because my hair wasn't fried, dyed, and laid to the side that I was automatically going through some type of existential or life crisis. And that's just not true. People just choose better healthier not saying better let me take that back i don't want to discriminate against anybody who's still you know using relaxers on the creamy crack or what have you but because people have evolved and they have been open to new information and decided to do something new does not mean that they are going through a life crisis or their just their life is in shambles sorry stop saying that to people because it's extremely rude number nine natural hair is unprofessional um i did a little poll on facebook and my instagram and i asked um my friends and followers what are some of the myths and some of the stigmas that you heard around natural hair and are people that have said to you about natural hair about your natural hair and one of the main things that um, people said to me is that people thought it was unprofessional now i have said this to y'all before I'll say it to you again. I am an educator. Um, that's my profession. Um, before I was an educator, I was in finance for about five or six years. And that's when I actually I went natural. But because you decide to wear your hair, how it grows out of your head, that's deemed unprofessional. Like, I just, I don't get it. Like, help me. Actually, I don't need y'all to help me get it. I don't. Because... Someone deciding to literally just grow their hair, how it grows out of their head. I don't understand how that can be deemed unprofessional unless we're going by a Eurocentric view of beauty, which a lot of us still hold on to, to be quite honest. But coils, locks, knots, any of those things, no matter how your hair grows out of your head, if you are conducting your business as a profession, no, then you are being professional. Does that make sense? If you're doing what you're supposed to do in your profession, you're being professional, 
period your hair has nothing to do with whether you're professional or not now if you don't you know if your hair is matted if you don't take care of your hair then that's another story for grooming but that has nothing to do with it just growing out of your head and you taking care of it how it's how god made it to grow out of your head number eight you can create your curl pattern okay so let's be clear your curl pattern is an innate to you as your eye color you can't change your i mean you can change your eye color if you get contacts or if you do a little surgery where you, you know switch eye open on whatever something that's not even fda regulated here in the united states but you cannot create your eye color you cannot create your skin color you cannot create your curl pattern i'm so sorry to tell you now you can do um twist outs and you can do um rod sets and things of that nature to help um mold your hair to the shape of whatever you're trying to do like twisting it or molding it to the shape of the rod but eventually it's going to revert back to the curl that just grows out of your head. Um, I got my hair done Saturday and I did a wash and go with my hairdresser. My curls didn't look like this. If y'all watched my previous videos, which I am gonna link, my curls, even though my curls are still cute, they didn't quite look like this. This is how, more so of how my curls just look, just them just being. You can't create them. Now you can do things to discover what curls you have in your head and the things you can you can do certain things to enhance your curls but you cannot necessarily create a curl pattern all right number seven going back natural is somehow cheaper <laughs> oh honey if you have not started your natural hair care journey or if you're at the beginning stages of your natural hair care journey, let me just let you in on a little secret. You are going to become a product junkie. And not for the sake of just you feel like you have to have everything, but you have to try a lot of different things until you figure out what works for your hair, what conditioner works with what shampoo, what leave-in works with what gel. Um, so you have to find try a lot of different combinations to really figure out what works best for your hair just because you're not getting a relaxer every six weeks just because you're not getting a sew-in every two months or three months or four months or whatever and you're not buying two and three and four hundred dollar wigs that doesn't mean that hair care is cheap you still have you only you're only going to get out what you put in so if you put in you know um quality products and time and maintenance and getting your ends clipped and things of that nature that costs money it just does so it's 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 not cheaper sorry if you thought this was going to be like the easy way out it ain't. <laughs> all right number six all curly or natural hair care products are not created equally sorry there is not just one standard product that's going to work for all naturals across the board. Or if you feel like you have, quote unquote, a certain type of hair that that's someone who has that same type of hair, you know, the products are going to work for both of you all the same. It doesn't. It does not. Again, your hair is um unique within its own right. When you're talking about the different textures within your head um within the different textures within a single strand sometimes when you're talking about the porosity of your hair that's different for everybody so even if you are a quote-unquote 4c or a 3b or whatever that shenanigans is um that doesn't mean that that's going to work you know those products are going to work for you just because it worked for someone else you got to do your due diligence and you got to really take the time to figure out what works best for your hair. That's the only way that, you know, this journey is going to get easier for you if you take the time to figure out what works best for you. Number five. We're halfway through. Natural hair doesn't grow. Oh me, oh my. 
let's talk about this. So many times I've heard that natural hair doesn't grow while I'm over here picking at my head. Let me tell y'all, and I'm going to make an, an entire video about my natural hair care journey. I got my very first relaxer, my kitty perm, when I was five years old. Never, ever forget that day in my life. Actually, it was a two-part day because my mom tried to do the just for me, and she didn't know what she was doing, so she actually took me to a salon. And my very first hairdresser was Miss Marva, and she slapped a perm in my head when I was five years old. You know why she slapped a perm in my head? Because my hair was too long and thick. Super long, super thick. Never had a relaxer in it before a day in my life. If you take care of something, it's going to grow. If you take care of a child, it's going to grow. If you take care of a plant and you water it and give it the nutrients it needs, it's going to grow. If you take care of your bank account and you save and you um, do whatever it is that you need to do to take care of your finances, it's going to grow. If you have a small business and you take time to tend to your business and you put time and effort into your business, it's going to grow. Same thing with natural hair. The reason that your hair doesn't grow has nothing to do with you being natural. It has everything to do with you not taking care of your hair. Period. <laughs> I just wanted to do the little, you know, the gif thing. Okay, whatever. But, um, but yeah. Your hair doesn't grow because you don't take care of it. That's just the bottom line. There are no ifs, there's no ands, or no buts around it. If you don't take care of your hair, it's not going to grow. And people get the misconception that you don't necessarily have to take care of natural hair, which is going to be one of my top three myths, actually. But let's get into number four. Number four, your ethnicity determines how long your hair can grow or how long it will be. Um, I have, when I did, I told you all I did this poll on um, my other social media platforms, on my Facebook and on my YouTube. And um, one of my Facebook followers, shout out to Vicky, said that people used to tug on her hair and ask her if it was real. Now, Vicky, um, if I'm not mistaken, I know that she is, um, I know she's mixed, but I'm not necessarily sure what ethnicity she's mixed with, but she has a beautiful, gorgeous hair. And people think that just because you're mixed that you have a certain texture or it's gonna determine the length of your hair. Absolutely not. I know plenty of people who are mixed who don't take care of their hair and it's broke off and it looks like um, a stock uh, stock graph. It looks like, Doo -doo 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 -doo. yep. If you're, I know people who are mixed who don't take care of their hair and it's broke off like nobody's business. I have, I know people who are not mixed and they do the due diligence, they wash their hair, they condition their hair, they um, make sure their hair has the their hair has the moisture that it needs, um, and it's sticking to their routine once a week, and their hair flourishes. They're just a regular Douglas Megala black girl from around the corner. Um, but your ethnicity has nothing to do with you, how you maintain and take care of your hair. There's plenty of mixed people who do. They do have gorgeous hair. There's many, plenty of mixed people who don't have gorgeous hair. There's plenty of Black Americans, Haitian Americans, Jamaican Americans, um, Nigerian Americans, whatever, who have beautiful, beautiful hair. And we also, this is going to be my honorable mentions, stop equating hair beauty to length, people. Stop it. You can have beautiful hair and it not be long. <laughs> Hello just so you see and this haircut is not one by force it was by one of choice i've been bald by choice um but still a tangent stop telling mixed people that their hair is gonna be long just because they're mixed or telling little black girls that their hair is not gonna be long because they're not mixed stop it let's do it let's just let's just let's just do it with it all right y'all we are getting into our top three myths that we're debunking when it comes down to natural hair 
Number three, curly hair is brittle or dry. So, and I mean so many times, um, I've had coworkers who have violated my personal space. I'm like, oh my God, your hair start touching and all this other stuff. Oh my God, your hair is so soft. Um, yeah. Is it supposed to be a Brillo pad? Like natural hair needs moisture, period. The key to hair growth is moisture, moisture, moisture. So if you're taking care of your natural tresses and your natural curls, it's not going to feel like dry, brittle sticks. Like you don't go up to someone who is, you know, Hispanic or white or whatever and say, oh my God, your hair is so soft. You would just naturally expect their hair to be soft because it looks like they take care of it, right? Right. If someone doesn't take care of their hair, no matter what texture it is, it's going to be bright. It's going to be brittle. It's going to be dry and you'll be able to see it like, dang, they need to like maybe do a protein treatment or something or maybe figure it out what their hair looks like straw. If your hair looks like straw, no matter what texture it is, it's dry. And you need to make sure that you're giving your hair the moisture that it needs. And same thing with natural hair. It can, it can be dry if you're not taking care of it. But if you're taking care of it, then it's just as soft as any other texture of hair. Do y'all see like the key is like taking care of your hair? Okay. All right. Myth number two. Natural slash curly hair is hard to manage. This myth truly, truly gets under my skin. People automatically assume because it is, your hair is curly or coily that it has to be difficult um, to manage. I don't know if you've picked this up yet, but the key point that I'm driving home here is that if you take care of your hair, then you're going to be in good shape. Like it's hair, so it has to be taken care of, period. It is going to be harder to manage if you don't detangle your hair once a week, if you don't wash your hair once a week, if you don't deep condition your hair if you don't do all the things to make sure that your hair is getting everything that it needs it's going to be hard to manage period no matter again no matter the texture curls coils or not it's going to be hard to maintain if you don't take care of your hair but is it a different texture than what most people are used to sure is it when most people go to hair school, do they teach you how to um, like care for natural hair? All, all the, Everyone that I've talked to, all the beauticians I've talked to, they said they don't. So it is. It's different. But just because it di it's different doesn't mean that it's harder. It just means that it's new. And new doesn't equate to hard. Not until you figure it out. So you need to figure out how to manage your hair. And once you get yourself on a routine, then it's a piece of cake. My natural hair care, not natural hair care, oops. My wash day routine that I did for you all, I do it every single Sunday. And when I don't do it Sunday and my hair does get dry and it does get brittle, my hairdresser can tell, she's like, oh, Catrice, you haven't been doing maintaining your wash days, have you? You haven't been drinking enough water, have you? And I'm like, nah, you're right. I haven't because um, little small tip, everything that you put in your body comes out of your hair follicles. Um, so if you're drinking enough water, you can tell through your hair. If you're getting drug tested, a lot of times I do hair plugs because it comes out through your hair follicles. Um, but it... It's not that it's harder to manage. It's just that it's new for most people. It's different. But different doesn't equate to hard. Different is just different. 
And so stop telling curly women that, oh, well, it's more difficult to detangle or it's difficult to do this or it's more difficult to do that. It's new. It's new, but that doesn't mean it's difficult. Did I try that home trail? You need me to say it one more time? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Myth number one. And if you don't pay attention to anything else in this video, please pay attention to this one. Because I want to debunk this myth so it will forever be debunked. Okay? Listen. Are y'all listening? Okay. There is no such thing as good or bad hair. Let me say that for you again. There is no such thing as good or bad hair. If you want to see me get into an argument, you want to see me debate, you want to see me get indignant, say something about good or bad hair. It absolutely, positively, without a doubt, grinds my gears. And let me tell you why. I should have had some wine. We should have had a wind down. Oh, no, it's, it's not Wednesday. I might do a wind down Wednesday. If y'all want to see me do wind down Wednesdays, let me know. Put it in the comments. And we might, you know, be able to fit that into the filming schedule. But anyway, back to the matter at hand. There's no such thing as good or bad hair. There's only a such thing as taking care of hair and not taking care of hair, period. And I'm spe speaking specifically to men and women in the Black community right now. The entire diaspora, or diaspora, or however you decide that you want to say it. Um, We have gotten into this habit of quantifying and qualifying hair and it being quote-unquote, good or bad. Good hair is typically described as the looser curls, more easy to manage, but we just debunked that one in, you know, myth number two. Um, or, you know, looser curls, less textured, more silky, that's considered, quote-unquote, good hair. And if your hair has more texture in it, has more kink in it, more coil in it, it's considered, quote unquote, bad hair or black hair or slave hair or what else have I heard? Kunta Kente hair or um, any of the things that you have heard in your lifetime, it's what those are considered. And as people of color, in 2020 it's about time that we stop letting other people's standards of beauty define how we see ourselves okay and that's really why i do not subscribe to the categorization of hair with the 1a the 2b the 3xyz and the 4 elemental p we don't do that over here one, because your hair texture differs in different parts of your hair. For me, the middle of my hair is more coarse opposed to the perimeters of my hair. And also, you can have different textures within a single strand of your hair. So we don't need to be focusing on categorizing our hair because at the end of the day, when you're categorizing your hair, you're going back to the notion of, well, 4C is bad and 1A or 2B is good because that's looser. No, there's no point in categorizing your hair. The only thing that you need to figure out how to do is what works for your hair, if I haven't harped on that enough. Um, but this notion of what makes what the only, like what makes hair good or bad? Someone tell me. Like in the description box, when you're watching this, Tell me what makes good or bad hair, honestly and truly. Because the only thing that makes it good or bad is whether it's healthy or not. 
And because you don't know how to uh, manage your hair and it breaks off and it's dry, you don't got no edges, that's when it becomes quote unquote bad hair. But I guarantee you, if you figure out how to maintain your hair and it starts to flourish, it's going to be beautiful. So get this notion and get this Eurocentric standard of beauty out of your head that looser curls and slick, something slick down is beautiful. Your hair is beautiful just the way that it grows out of your head. Do you need to make sure that it's not matted, that it's combed, that you have, um, that it's groomed, that you groom yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Grooming is professional. Not, that's when, it, that's when we boil down to the professionalism is whether you groom yourself or not. This, while it may not be slicked, and I have picked up my curls, I'm not going to lie to y'all. It's just as beautiful as when I had um, my pixie cuts and when I had my wraps and when I had everything else. Because like I said, I've done everything. Relaxed hair too, I've done everything. So let's, again, I just, it, bo it really does bother me that we subscribe to this notion of, you know, what's good and what's bad instead of what's healthy and what's unhealthy. Make sure that you're grooming yourself and taking care of your hair. That's what you need to focus on. And everything else will fall into place. That's just my two cents. Those are my top 10 natural hair care um, myths debunked from 10 to 1. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, this is a little bit of me going on a rant. <laughs> but if you know me like in real life, real life, what's cat corner, cat's corner without a rant? Like what is life without a, a cat rant? It's bound to happen sooner or later. Um, so why not? It happened now. I hope that you all enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. Um, and I'm going to see you next Sunday. All right? Bye. And one more thing. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's supposed to be my top 10 myths and this isn't really a myth. But when we're talking about um, categorization of your hair and trying to find like products per like quote unquote category, you need to be looking at the porosity of your hair and not the quote unquote categorization of your hair. If you don't know what porosity means, it means the ability for your hair to absorb and maintain moisture. If you have a low porosity, that, that means that your hair doesn't absorb and maintain moisture as much. If you have high porosity, that means that your hair maintains a lot of moisture. The easiest way to figure out the porosity of your hair is if you take a strand of your hair and pluck it out, or a couple of strands of hair. You don't even have to pluck it out your head. Take it out of a brush or something, or a comb. Put it in a cup of water. If it floats, you got high porosity. If it sinks to the bottom, you got low porosity. And if you watch my video from my wash day routine, you know the key, and I've said this in this video, the key to your hair and maintaining, um, you know, a good grooming regimen and maintaining the health of your natural hair is to make sure that you're giving your hair plenty of moisture. Moisture, moisture, moisture. That's the key. So when you're looking at products, look for the porosity like gear it towards the porosity of your hair, not towards the categorization, because that's that's bull crap. I'm t I told y'all I'm trying very hard not to cuss on here. It's bull crap. Okay, I'm done for real this time. You all have a fantastic Sunday, and I will see you next time in the corner. <laughs>